Today we're talking about this one, Alternomorphs 2, The Next Passage. It's a very shiny thing, I'm trying to get, not get too much glare on it. You can just about see there's a, there's a picture of Tobias on the front in a load of Animorphs logos. You have been chosen. You are the sixth Animorph. Are you ready? I am ready, or well, I was ready. I've done the full read. And this video, right, is gonna be accompanied by a second video where I do a full book read, and that goes up on Monday. So if you want to see me react to this whole book, because I've never read it before, if you want to see me read through the whole thing on Monday, that will be your opportunity. This will be a relatively short view, just like when I did the first Alternomorphs. Let me just put that here and hope that it has no glare on it. Okay, there we go. Next passage. Ghost written by Emily Costello. How does she do? Fine. A couple of spelling errors here or there, but nothing really too bad. This follows the same format as the previous Alternomorphs book, where on the odd chapter you have to make a choice, because you are now the sixth Animorph. And I think the choices, for the most part in this book, are better than the last one. Because in the first Alternomorphs, it was always, are you going to morph Animal A, Animal B, or Animal C? This one is a bit more, it's got a bit more variety in the types of choice that you receive. That isn't always great though, because some of them are bizarre and end up in some really bizarre consequences. Just like Alternomorphs, it focuses on two plots that we've had before. Correction, three. Three plots in this book, and they are books 20, The Discovery, book 26, The Attack, and Megamorphs 2, In the Time of Dinosaurs. Very convenient that I've got Mr. T-Rex here holding the book up. What happens is this, right? You are not only the sixth Animorph, right? This isn't you. It tries to be, but if you've read book 20, and you know what goes on this book, this book, you're immediately very aware of who you truly are. You are a canon character in what appears to be an alternate timeline. You are David, because that's what we always wanted to be in Animos. We wanted to be David, the hero David. Oh wait, he was a sociopathic lunatic. Strange choice for narration in this particular book. But yeah, you're very clearly him because you start by being in the construction. This is part of the reason I actually found this book quite fascinating, because you see what David does in the lead up to that. He's new in the school, he barely talks to anyone. He calls the people who do try to talk to him losers and, you know, less than. So you already get the feeling that this guy is a bit of a dick, which is in character for David. He goes into the school, oh, it's only the losers that want to talk to me. I'll be, I want to be in with the cool kids. Okay, mate, okay. <laughs> shallow dick, but he ends up in the construction site all alone, throwing stuff against the concrete blocks and suddenly out pops that thing, the blue box, and he picks it up and he feels a tingle. Oh, this thing's weird, I'm gonna keep it and sell it on eBay, which he goes and does. So we follow the storyline of book 20 up until the point where there's the big fight in David's bedroom with Visser 3 coming in and the Hawk Bajir and all that. It's basically a spitting image of book 20, but from David's point of view, and the book is trying to make it seem that you're David, <laughs> essentially. Everything follows along the canon storyline until we get to his first morph. So what happens is he has a bit of a look around. In book 20, the actual book 20, he gets given the morphing power in the woods and he morphs a bird of prey. Okay, that was taken in a cage. This diverts from that and they take him back to Cassie's barn where they give him the morphing power and he acquires a horse. And that's his first morph acquisition. Now this, I do have to point out that this contradicts the way the book is talked about, uh, the box is talked about in book 39. Remember book 39 where all you have to do is gently touch it and you've got the morphing power? Because when he first got hold of the morphing cube, he said, oh, it tingles. And I thought, are they actually running with this change of how the morphing cube works? But no, later on, they throw the morphing cube to Axe, who then offers it to David or you, touch it, get the tingle, now has the morphing power. So book 39 is no longer... It's not, I know this book isn't canon, but I think it's actually more reliable than book 29 when it comes to these things. So book 39, not canon, nor is this one. 
okay? Two non-canon books. But also, make, it puts the point across that it has to be an and light holding the cube in order to give the power. So that clears up that little mystery, which is something that this book seems to be actually quite useful for. Well done, book. Not too bad. But what happens now is the Elemist comes in. Yeah, Elemist. And he says something along, along the lines of, you've messed with the timeline. Oh, tisk tisk. I'm going to have to change things again. Because apparently, yeah, it was supposed to happen as it did in book 20. In book 20, I'm actually having a thought now. I'm having a genuine thought. This is canon. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it, okay? So the Elemist comes along and says, right, you've messed things up. I'm now going to give you a choice, which is obviously one of the choices in the books. If you guess wrong, you and your parents die. Or if you choose correctly, then I shall save your family. Because his parents in this book are both taken by the Yerks. Okay? So you've now got that choice. And the, it says... He gets given like a little remote thing that says A or B. And the choice given in the book is choose A or B. And I'm thinking, so the Elmas has just said, make the wrong choice and you die. Make the right choice and you rescue your family. And the choice is A or B. Turned out it's not quite like that, but I don't know what it is because it's actually very confusing. But A and B take you into two different scenarios. This isn't like in Alternatives 1 where you actually have to go through both scenarios just... There's a big jagged border in the middle and you move on to the next mission. This one says you can go to 26 the catch, uh, the attack or Megamorphs 2 in the time of dinosaurs. So I did both. So I did the first one where you go to the Iscort homeworld and fight off the Howlers. And I went through that, you know, made a couple of wrong decisions here and there. One of the ones that stuck out to me is Cassie's just died, spoiler, she got killed by a howler and Jake has gone off to the, in the actual 26 book where he goes and flies after the howler and acquires it when it's falling to its death. And they found this abandoned factory and they're in there and Rachel comes up to David and is like, if you, uh, I'm blaming you for all of this, you're the guilty one, you're the reason Cassie died even though technically I slash David wasn't and says, you better promise not to get in our way again. And your choice is accept the, or make the promise or refuse. And so I refused the promise because I thought, I'm not taking orders from Rachel. I'm not just going to promise to stay out of the way. I'm fully involved in this. So I took that option. And then the axe calls out morph to fly. They're coming for us. So I morph to fly. Or David morphs to fly. And they trap him in a bottle and turn him into a fly nofflet. And I'm thinking, what? Th this isn't Animorphs. What my, what's my character done wrong? He was in a place, Cassie tried to rescue him and died because of it. It wasn't my character's fault. Oh, my character's done nothing wrong. Throughout that part of the book, he was just there helping. He was actually being an asset to the team. <laughs> and um, and they, they say, you better promise not to stay in our way. And because I refused that, they trapped me as a fly nofflet. And I'm like, what? When did the Animorphs become the bad guys? <laughs> Just seemed a bit silly, but that was a wrong decision, so he went back and did it again. And we got to the point where the Howls thing ends, and then there's a big flash, and they're in a tink, tinker top, tink, whatever they're called, those parades in New York, and they're sitting in an open top limousine, all the Animorphs, except for Cassie, because she died. And they're going through New York in this, in this limousine for whatever reason. <laughs> and they're all like, yeah, we made it. We flashed into this limousine, but Cassie's not here. And then the Elemist comes back and says, right, so you've passed the test. My character passed the test. So <laughs> he says, you now have a choice to make. And I'm like, but you said if I passed the test, you'd save my family. And he said, I'll only save one. So the Elmist being a dick as per usual. And so then my character, for whatever reason, and this baffled me, says, okay, revive Cassie. And Cassie reappears and they're all smiling and she says, oh, I love these parades. And then that's it, end. I'm thinking, wait, so you were offered the chance of bringing back one of your parents who are now basically dead or worse than, 
and you've known this Cassie character for a day, a day, and you're like, I've got to save Cassie. Uh, come on, I mean, that's just freaking stupid. <laughs> but anyway, at the end of that, little black bold text at the bottom just says, nice choice. And I'm like, okay, is that it? Is that the book? Is that, is that it? <laughs> so I thought, oh, f screw that, I'm gonna choose option B from the earlier choice. And, I went, and then that took me to the time of dinosaurs. And we go for all that sort of stuff. It basically follows the same plot line as in the time of dinosaurs. Go back to that review if you wanna see the minor details of that particular one. And we, we go through that, nothing on, out, of the, out of the usual happens. Get to the end, the, the bit where they're looking at the canyon, where the, the Nesk and the crab people are. Christ, I forgot their names. But you've got a choice of looking at this canyon and walking away or saying, let's investigate it. And if you take the let's investigate it route, suddenly flash and the Elemist comes back and he takes them to a th an IMAX theater, sits all the animals down in there and shows them a brief history of time, essentially. Not the book, <laughs> not the Stephen Hawking thing, but he just shows innovation. And there's like a whole page that just reads like an Argos catalog of things like bridges and wheels and cities and submarines and all that sort of stuff. And they're just sitting in the theater watching this. <laughs> and the Elemis just, again, just says, you made the right choice. <laughs> and then, uh, God, what happens after that? Nothing really. Yeah, that was it. So they made a right choice because if it all hinged on whether he said, let's investigate that canyon. And the Elemis has a whole lecture on human intuition. And I'm thinking, wait, so this entire book rested on, <laughs> this entire book was about giving the Animorphs a lesson on human intuition? Why? It just seems like a non sequitur to everything that's gone on. <laughs> just weird. But then flash again. And the last chapter, or the end of that last chapter, David, or you, have gone back in time to before any of this happened, before you got the blue box, as you were driving in, or being driven in the car by your mother towards your new house, when he was moving into that new school where he meets the Animorphs. And he thinks to himself, oh, now I've got to do all this again. And what's weird is, remember we had the choice earlier, A or B, and they both end up in totally different endings, one of them just ended and the other one brought us back to this situation. But when he's thinking about that, he's, he's also, he's saying, oh, I remember everything. I remember the T-Rex stuff and I remember the Howlers. But you, it was one or the other. So how do we remember both? There's no connection there. It didn't explain anything. It's just confused and baffling. Not very well planned out, I don't think. So yeah, the last lines are, I could, I, I'm back in time now. I don't have to walk through the construction site and find the blue box unless I want to. Now that line makes me think, hold on, maybe this is canon. Maybe this is canon. Maybe he goes back in time and he does this all again, but instead of the horse thing happening in the barn, they go do the bird of prey in the cage and, and book 20 kicks off from there and we follow through the rest of the series. This twat knows all this happened and goes and does it again and things turn out differently. It could fit into canon. This could actually be canon. It's theoretical. Poorly planned and all that, but a lot of animal books are, let's be honest. So yeah, this is David. It's not you, it's David. And it's, it's, it is fascinating really, just seeing that initial scene of how he found the blue box and what he did and where he got, how he got there. Same thing from, from his point of view. The only problem with it being canon is that some of the actions that he slash you end up taking aren't very David-like. They're not very sociopathic, which we know David to be. But yeah, that's, that's that. It's, it's a bit of a mystery, this book, whether we learn a lot from it and we actually appreciate it for the little hints that it gives us, or whether we just fob it off as, oh, that's, you know, it's just borrowing from the David storyline. I'll tell you what though, it's better than the last one. I gave that one a two out of 10, not that I counted that towards overall scores in the series. This one's much better, I find. A lot better. And I'm gonna give it 
I'm going to give it a five because it was actually quite a nice read. I, I enjoyed it. And seeing those little extra details confirming that the Andalites have to hold the cube for, for someone else to get the morph power. Yeah. Although I think that happens in a later book anyway, so it's probably irrelevant. Probably didn't need it. <laughs> but yeah, seeing that little bit of David's perspective and having that mystery of, oh, did this really happen? Did he then go back and get the blue cube again and kick off all the madness that happened from book 20 onwards? Possibly. Interesting. Yeah. Well done, book. You didn't let me down. In fact, I think you've done much better than I expected you to do. So that was Alternomorphs 2, the next passage, a uh, present surprise. Next week, The Familiar, book 41. Now, this one isn't very well renowned in the Animorphs community, but you know what? I've got sneaky little high hopes for it. I think it could be interesting. It could be a complete flop. It could be book 37, part two. I doubt it. And I hope to God it's not. I hope it's a good book. But that's next week. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to see the full read I, I experienced of this book, that video goes up on Monday, the usual time. So if you want to go see that, please do. Think of it as an audio book with a few little, <laughs> little comments thrown here or there. So thank you. Thank you for watching. I shall see you next time. Ta-ra.